Well, hello and welcome to Gymnasium. We're back into Satisfactory. And this time, we are going to look at how to make an early game optimal iron setup. So, to get the optimal iron setup, we actually need to do a couple of upgrades. And we are finally starting to get a very nice, automated and very cool looking uh, factories. Because we are going to unlock some base foundations. You, know, you remember what I told you about picking up random stuff? Well, do it. Uh, and if you don't remember it, watch the previous video. <laughs> In any case, um, I would like to give a huge shout out to my patrons, the commanding officers in the army of Jimenezim. So, Admiral LCG Canyon, we have Commander Ejin, Lieutenant Asteria, Cadet Marty McBacon and Cadet Shark93. So thanks a lot for supporting the channel. In any case, let's come back here and see what have we done. Um, if you have problems with power, you remember we unlocked some biomass burners. Um, you should indeed just add more biomass burners. And if you just click E on a power pull, you can see that the consumption uh, is just much lower the max consumption which is much lower than the capacity if the capacity is above max consumption you will never have a problem so these burn biomass i've set up a factory thing that produces biomass and i'll just insert leaves here and it just makes biomass for me can't be more handy than this right so next up, we need to do some unlocks. So, base building. And what is that? Base building lets us do foundations and walls, which is basically uh, what we need to actually do proper factories. So, we are going to unlock that. Improved overview. Building these will provide a grid for more advanced organizing and sectioning. The next thing we really need to have is logistics. So let's select this milestone. The port returns. And when the pod is back again, it means we can unlock the next step. So fortunately, it didn't have to make a long trip to uh, some other world or something. So it's just back within a minute. And there we go. We can finally unlock logistics. Very nice indeed. Milestone reached. I just absolutely love the fact that the lookout tower, <laughs> basically the watchtower, is under organization. It feels very, um, I don't know, campy. In any case, uh, let us look at logistics. On logistics, we now have the vertical conveyor lift, so we can actually lift it, lift things vertically, which is very necessary for some nice logistics. But the most important thing is the mergers and the splitters. And these will be absolutely necessary in our coming, um, well, optimal iron factory, which we will be setting up in this episode. One little note here before we start building our beautiful factory is that here we can see we have access to the tier two things. The next one would be field research, but we can actually already unlock things from part three. So we have parts assembly, we have obstacle clearing with a chainsaw and cool stuff like that. We have jump pads, resource sync bonus program, and logistics mark two. On the logistics mark two, we get a belt that produces 120 resources per minute. Do you think this sounds a little bit familiar? Well, it should. Let's walk up over here to our pure resource and check at the minor mark one. 120 iron ore per minute. All right, so because this is a pure one, we produce 120. But of course, this belt, as you can see here, only transports 60 resources per minute. So this facility is very much locked. When we build our optimal iron factory, we will be designing it with the thought that we will actually unlock Tier Logistics Mark II very soon. Because as you can see, this is not impossible to unlock. 
Um, we just need to work a little bit and we can unlock logistics marks too. And it will be very easy to fix this, uh, to fix the factory we will build when we have unlocked this. But we will build the factory with the thought in our mind all the time that we soon will get mark 2. That's, you know, kind of important to just note. To build our new factory, we want to clear up some space. And to do that, we're going to choose obstacle clearing. That's something we want to unlock. And to do that, we need a lot of screws. We also want to unlock field research. And there too, we also want a lot of screws. So to make some screws, we will just because of this automated screw making process. Now this one makes iron rods, puts it here. And after this container, because after containers you can also put things. We're going to make a little screw drill thing. So this one makes screws. And you can see when the screws are coming in here. It will start making screws automatically and we can have 500 of them in one place. So we just need to wait a little bit and we will have a lot of screws. Let's start with field research because the field research we can research a little bit um, while we're waiting for the more screws. And there we go a good couple of screws. Just insert it and let's go. It's collected in the field. To ensure a greater chance of success during exploration, an upgraded tool belt has been provided, as well as an object scanner. And there we go, we got some new stuff, remember, to check all the new stuff here. And uh, the news says new if you haven't looked at them before. We have walls, we have foundations, very good for our new place. We got uh, our personal storage box, and of course that thing we unlocked this time the man and now we should also of course check this area and indeed we have something called the object scanner which we can use to actually scan for some uh, stuff uh, in this update too the map has been unlocked so just click m and you can actually see where we are on the map very handy we can explore and we can add some uh, markers and stuff like that very handy indeed so let's build a man this is a research station you can have many of them it's just like a crafting bench but a little bit different here we can see we can do all sorts of research so basically go to your box grab everything and research away while you are making screws because we do want to unlock obstacle clearing so select that milestone and let's wait for some more screws while we do some research. And the thing is basically like this. Uh, you go to this. You just start the research. Here's the power slugs. You really want to research these. And now we can make power shards. And there we go. We finally have enough screws. So we just put them in there and we can launch. Fantastic. What we got with this upgrade was the chainsaw, as well as solid biofuel, which is even more efficient to burn than this normal biomass. The biofuel is basically, uh, it's basically pellets. And there we go, we can now make a chainsaw. The chainsaw goes into your hand, as you have might expected, and you wonder what do we need to run this thing? Well. We actually need solid biofuel. So we're gonna slap together some solid biofuel. And there we go. Now we got obstacle clearing. And why do we need this? Well, to clear up some space in order for us to fit the factories. And did you know, you don't need to hand pick these leaves anymore. You can just stand in the middle. And they are just magically removing everything in the vicinity so it's really handy for just clearing the bushes and be able to really have fit your factories all right we have finally came to the point where we can let all of this beautiful factory thing we have made just go 
So, what are we doing? How do we do that? Well, basically, just go into the factories, pick up all the parts you can't fit in your hand, and put it in a big stack of containers like this. Just do away with it all so that you have a lot of space on your inventory. You should actually have all the space on your inventory. Then we can just climb up this beautiful little watchtower. Click the disassemble F key and just hold control. And not this one, this one. And you just basically aim on the thing and click control. It will be selected. And there we go. Let it all go. Gone. And there we go. A beautiful, fresh start. A clean slab to work with. Now I'm going to teach you something quite useful for making larger factories and larger structures. Go into the foundations menu, select a foundation, and when you hold control, you can see that you can no longer turn around or move around. You can only move the pieces to a specific area, like it's some kind of global grid. This is the global grid. This grid is available anywhere and everywhere. And it's super handy to know the global grid. Because with the global grid, you can connect factories kilometers away completely flawlessly with foundations if you build with a global grid. So, my recommendation to you is try the global grid. If you're okay with this angle, well, use the global grid. In Satisfactory, we don't build around nature, no, we try to make nature fit around us. So, we are using the global grid. And to build a little bit faster, click R and you'll get the zoop mode. And when we have the zoop mode, we can basically build foundations 10 at a time, just like that. To build a little bit quicker too, we're going to talk about hot bars. So, one, two, three, four, you probably noticed these are hot bar to things. We could even access conveyor belts before we unlock them. It's weird like that. If you hold Alt, you can scroll between 10 different hot bars. So, we're going to do hot bar number two. Click the build menu and hover over this, click one, hover over this, two, three, four, five, six. Well, we can go with walls. Seven and eight. And there we have it. We can have now hot bar number two for some weird stuff like that. And if you don't want to use the different foundations like this, you can only have one of the foundations in your hot bar and you can click E. And when you're at E, you can instead select similar variants of the same size. So kind of handy, which is what I'm going to do with my hotbar. Beautiful, clear space. This is just exactly why we wanted to unlock the chainsaw. It didn't take me very long to clear up this space. And now we really have the best, best, best opportunities to make a really nice factory. All right, so here we have a nice little foundation we'll make our factory on. We will go into the build menu and select a minor mark one. And you can actually place some foundations over the mine source. The mine still can go beneath and uh, reach the resources. So let's pair this thing up. This thing produces 120 iron ore per minute. And we go to a smelter here, which we have conveniently spawned, and it can process 30 iron ore per minute. Now I will show you a little handy trick. Press N, like uh, north, in your keyboard. And here you can write in 120 divided by 30. And that's 4. Which means we can have 4 smelters to process this facility. However, that is when we have uh, upgraded to Mark II, which we will have been able to do quite soon. We're going to add four smelters like that. One smart tip you should definitely keep in mind 
is to make your factories future expandable. Not that you will expand them, but that you can expand them if you want to. If for example you'll get more ore per minute. Now we will need to add one of the new blocks. What is that? Merger. No. Hold E. Splitters. Splitters have one input in orange and three outputs in uh, green. And we can align it up by holding control here and we'll snap it to point and they will snap to point because we're in a foundation too. And you can see the green lines here. That means it will connect up here, input there, output there. And we'll of course align them up for the other ones as well. Like that. Like that. And like that. And there are other ways you can split up uh, splitters and make them divide them more equally. Uh, but that is only an advantage in the very earliest stages of material transportation. It will even out soon enough so you might as well just make a line like this. Because we also want it to be easily accessible and easily uh, constructible. So we're going to connect up this to this, then this to this, this to this, this to this, this to this, like that. And what we have done now is that if we, for example, would upgrade the miner sometime in the future so it produces more ore, we could potentially drag this uh, line out here and add another stack of smelters there. Pretty handy indeed. Now this friend comes along. Oh yes, okay, well well. And there we go. Four smelters connected up with beautiful conveyors, just like that. So now we just need to connect up some power. So we spawn one of these and we want to keep the power very much organized because we are going to thank ourselves in the long run. And we can just connect up the miner like that. Each the smelters, or smelters like that, we'll just go into it and select iron ingots for all of them. I don't think this guy is feeling too great. Mm -mm -mm. Now we need to look at some constructor math. So if we go to this thing, we select iron plate, and we do go to this thing and select iron rod. Both use iron ingots in order to produce stuff. And this provides 30 iron ingots per minute. If we look at this thing, this one requires 15 iron ingots per minute, while this one, the iron plates, require 30 iron ingots per minute. So to power an iron plate manufacturing facility, we need an entire smelter. To power a rod thing, we will need a half a smelter. So, for the ones that makes rods, we will basically have two constructors per smelter. However, we will begin with a simple thing, and that is the things that make iron plates. So, two of these will be dedicated to make iron plates. We're going to connect up one there, and one there. Conveyor bolts like that, conveyor bolts like that, iron plates, and iron plates. And these will now produce iron plates for us. Very nice. Of course, we will need to connect them up to power. And there we are. Production of iron plates has started indeed. If you don't quite remember what you put in what container for building the base, click the remove key F and just hover over it. Okay, we got leaves and stuff, and here we got all sorts of stuff, and here we got uh, other sorts of stuff, and here we got this sort of stuff. Pretty handy. If you want everything to reach full potential kind of early on, you can just manually fill up with some stuff you already had accidentally picked up, like iron ingots and stuff like that. You can just drop them in there, and uh, it will reach the full capacity a little bit sooner. 
Otherwise, you'll have to wait for it to kind of balance out itself, which it will do eventually. So uh, no worries about that. But if you want them to kind of look a little bit more and produce a little bit more things evenly from the get-go, you can fill them up with the materials you already had in your containers like that. Very handy. Now we will begin with making rods. Whoops, now we accidentally... So, uh, each one of these will be connected up to two constructors. So we will need to line up two constructors for each of these. And now you might understand, we either need to stack them tall, or we'll need to uh, stack them wide. So let's make some rods here. And I'm going to show you the vertical thing, because it's a little bit harder to do, and I think that's more valuable than all these other guides that kind of show you how to make it uh, flat like that. You probably can figure out how to do that yourself. So we're gonna make it vertical. And here you can see, we put one constructor just like we did for the plate manufacturing area. Then, we need to add some foundations. And I click R here, until I see build mode vertical. One, two, awesome. Then we take the ramp and we'll just put on two ramps like that so we can walk up here. Then we take this foundation, hold E, select a one meter high one, like that. And we can just add one there. And then we can add one there. And on this thing, we can flawlessly <laughs> place another constructor without it clipping into anything, without any part showing through the floor or any weird stuff like that. So now we can go and add another constructor here. And now it might be a little bit difficult, but it's not that hard. You can kind of see the edges there in the corner. You can see it should be right up there. And if you have any problems, you just use the lookout tower and you can build from there. It's um, almost as good as fly mood. Right, so now we need to divide it up to both these constructors. How do we do, how do, we do that? Well, it's a little bit weird, but it's definitely possible. We're gonna select the splitter. And here you see the orange input needs to be uh, close to the, uh, to the smelter here. And the output to the other side. And we see the green line when it lines up. Uh, make him go like one block, clipping into it a little bit like that. It still looks absolutely fine. Then we can go and add a Mark 1 conveyor belt. And from the first output right there. Alright. Now we need to select the conveyor lift. And this is why I have shown you to do all this research earlier. And we'll just climb up the smelter here. And we add it to the side. And when we are up here, we can see what is the like correct height. And here we can see this is the correct height. So we just place it down there. And we can add the other conveyor into the machine here. And if you're done, just like I did here, you can see we get these beautiful straight lines. So now we can just select iron rod here. And go down here and select iron rod and we just need to connect them up to power and they will produce iron rods so of course uh, we should now remove that thing and do it for the other machine isn't that kind of handy looks so neat we just already added our other floor and it makes it so much less expansive than it otherwise had to be we don't want to make two flat factories. It's kind of cool making pretty high factories too. Am I right or am I right? All right. Very nice, Jimodism. But uh, now then. Now we have uh, duplicated this thing. So we are producing rods on four facilities. And you might wonder why would we want to produce so many rods well ladies and gentlemen that is because we want to produce screws as well so when you look at kind of a build you can see that this thing glows kind of white you see there it doesn't glow at all it's kind of off and this is like green and that basically means that we haven't set that um, uh, we haven't set that one up yet so we'll need to go here and we click rods and we can see, yes, 
it is now green. You see this one was flashing yellow, and that was because, you know, it doesn't have the materials, but it's set up. So if they're yellow, they don't have the materials, and this is because uh, our facility kind of relies on we upgrading this to Mark II builds pretty soon, uh, because the limiting factor is this thing, the belt from the mine. All right, well, these are set up now, and we will now produce some screws, and we want to do it with like 100% efficiency. So if we go to this machine and we set up produce screws, we can see we need one iron rod, 10 per minute. All right, we need 10 iron rods per minute in order to produce screws efficiently. Well, ladies and gentlemen, these output 15 per minute. How do we solve this? Well, 15 times 2 equals 30. And 30 can be divided by 3. So, we have four machines that produce rods. And we're going to take two of them, slap them together, and divide them by 3 and divide them to three machines that are making screws. Pretty handy, did you get that? So we are going to merge these two things. And to do that, we're going to select the merger. And here you can see the green output will go to the side here. And now we need to refill our, uh, well, biomass, but whatever. So we will line it up here, and then we'll go one block to clip it in like one block like this. And if we do that, this conveyor belt will be completely straight. I don't know if you caught that, but uh, this thing is connected. If you just look in here, you can see I did connect the little conveyor belt there. And uh, you can do that perfectly. Um, you saw me do it just, but uh, you can just zoom in like that and you'll, you'll, you'll know if it's connected. Oh, and by the way, if you want this zoom key, Press P, and here we have like the photo mode, and then you just scroll to kind of zoom in like that, pretty handy. And uh, then you click the middle mouse button if you want a clean screen. And uh, just escape to get out of that mode. Now when we have these rods here, we want to drag the conveyor lift down. And you can see we can draw it down there, but it looks a little bit weird. And that's actually completely fine, you know why? Well because these mergers are kind of standing there pretty good. Uh, we, did, we did build them pretty tight, so it doesn't look too weird when we just remove those foundations underneath it. It kind of looks pretty well. And then we have the output of rods here. So this is 30 rods per minute. And as you might imagine, we need to divide this up. And what do we use? We use the splitter. Yes, I think you are getting a hang of this. We're just going to slap one of these there. And connect it up. And now we can divide it up by three. And there we go. We have now divided up this conveyor belt by three constructors. So then we can just go here and control C, control V. Control V and we'll, uh, can, we can skip some extra clicks like that. Very nice indeed. And the last thing we want to do in order to be well complete with this basic efficient iron setup is of course to upgrade to Mark II. And now we got all the materials to basically just slap together a couple of reinforced plates like this um, and then we can indeed say that this iron factory, iron basic factory, that's 100% efficient, is complete. All right, and there we have it. We have 50 plates indeed. And there we go. We can go to uh, the hub, fill up the concrete, the reinforced iron plates, and the normal plates, and we can finally upgrade this thing. All right, so check what we got new things. Conveyor lift mark two, stackable conveyor pole, all sorts of cool new things. And of course, 
the upgraded Mark II belt. And there we go. Select the conveyor. Go to Mark II. And now we can upgrade these there. So they will be faster from the mine. The mine should now be perfectly efficient indeed. And here you can see if we go into this facility. We can see that, uh, well it's still stabilizing a little bit. But we can see that this little bar. This little bar right down here. That's the efficiency meter. And if your efficiency is bad, this will be low. And if the efficiency is improving, this will slowly climb up to 100%. After an hour or so, this should be absolutely efficient. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this is how a perfectly 100% efficient basic iron manufacturing facility can look like. We produce iron plates, we produce iron rods, and we produce screws. And we do this at one mining source, with one miner, at 100% efficiency. So, I hope you thought that this little video was useful, and if you did, you should absolutely subscribe, because this is a serious. If you were missing some early gameplay tips, you should absolutely check out the previous videos. And you should also check out the next video, which will be, um, I think it will be about copper, but we shall see. And you will see when the next video is out on next Saturday. This is your host Jim Odessum, and I'm signing out. Playlist in description. Subscribe today.